Hi guys, welcome back to another day of World War II. We are nearing the end of the war. Um, and then we're going to take a trip back, but I want to kind of set up for you what was done. So the, the Yalta conference occurred in February 1945, um, months before Berlin, which is um, the capital of Germany, would fall. Um, Roosevelt, Churchill, and Stalin met in Yalta, which was a city that was near the Baltic uh, near the, sorry, not the Baltic, near the Black Sea. Um, and it was a city in the Soviet Union to come up with a plan on how Europe would be developed after the war. So they're seeing the end of the war in sight. And so these powers are getting together to try to make a plan for what is Europe going to look like after Nazi Germany is done away with and um after the access powers have been defeated and the war is deemed over so churchill and stalin now churchill was the british prime minister and stalin was the um the dictator of the soviet union decided on spheres of influence for europe um fdr was two weeks of protest and you'll learn about why in a little while um, the leaders agreed to split Germany into four zones, um, each under the control of one of the major allies, including France. So they included France in this, and I'm going to get my um, laser pointer up here. So each of the four major allies would take a section. There would also be a, um, the same divide would happen in the city of Berlin. So they were actually taking the city of Berlin and they were dividing it out into four parts. So you can look and see those parts are equal. But here, the green represents the parts of West Germany and um, that the British would take. The blue represents the parts that the French would take. The yellow represents what the United States would take. And then the red represents what the Soviet Union would take. The same thing held true for here in Berlin. You can see there's the red, that's the Soviet Union part. There's the blue, that's the French. The green is the um, British. And then there's the little part that the United States would control. So, um, Stalin would also get the Baltic. Britain was going to retake its Asian colony um, and the U.S. would keep the Pacific Islands. So remember the um, British uh, had control of Hong Kong and when the Japanese rolled in they kind of took over all of that. Um, the U.S. would keep take back the um, Vietnam and some of their uh, Pacific Islands that they owned or that they've colonized. Um, Stalin promised to allow elections in the nations of Eastern Europe that his army had liberated from the Germans. But in the end, as we're going to learn, Stalin never did allow free elections in Europe. Those countries actually became satellites of the Soviet Union. Now remember, the Soviet Union is not a democratic nation, but rather a communist country. Stalin also promised to enter the war against Japan once Germany was defeated. Um, and Stalin um, also, well, he did, okay. So critics argue though that Roosevelt and Churchill didn't do enough to prevent Soviet domination of half of Europe. Um, Eastern Europe is going to be a huge issue between, well, there'll be a huge issue we're gonna see coming up in between the Soviet Union and the Western countries 
um, after the war, but we're going to actually get into that when we talk on our next year. Priority of the unconditional surrender of Nazi Germany. After the war, Germany and Berlin, like we said, were going to be split into four zones. Um, and then the Nazi war criminals would be hunted down and brought to justice. Now, the one more promise, commitment that Stalin made, he made to Roosevelt. And he agreed that he would participate in the United Nations. Now, prior to this, the Soviet Union was not involved in the United Nations at all. All right, so the Allies decided to take Italy, but they were held up at the city of Anzio just before Rome. For months, American troops fought the German military, and they suffered a lot of casualties. Uh, Mussolini, um, however, now Mussolini, if you'll remember, he is the Italian dictator. Um, and Italy had lost complete faith in him, and the fascist council voted to remove him, so they kicked him out. He was arrested, but the Germans freed him and set him up as a ruler in northern Italy, because at this point, northern Italy was still controlled by the Germans. So Italy's real government, and I say real because the real government was the fascist council who kicked out Mussolini, they surrendered and then they turned and declared war on Germany. So German troops in Italy still fought as they retreated and finally the Americans took Anzio. Now in April 1945, Mussolini was shot and killed by the Italians as he tried to flee um, from Germany. Um, and here's an American newsreel from the time. So Papers, um, in the city so everyone could see. Um, this video was an actual U.S. news broadcast announcing that what had the fate of Mussolini and um, you're going to see a lot of propaganda. We've talked about propaganda and we talked about what propaganda was like in World War I. Um, World War II, you're going to see a very Americanized twist on what is being reported. Um, they're all facts, but you'll hear it laced with, um, he was a double crosser, he was a backstabbing, he got what he deserved. And those are some of the things you're going to hear in this broadcast. All right, so here we go. Um, <laughs> Bombastic Mussolini, the sawdust Caesar, comes to his end in the gutter, fitting climax to a life of treachery and double cross. He led his country to ruin when he threw his lot in with Hitler. Oh yes, they saw some palmy days when Il Duce confidently stabbed France in the back. He had dreams of empire before the bayonets of the Allies deflated this false prophet. He was captured once before and rescued by German paratroops. This time he had no such chance. Partisans tried him along with his sweetheart and several henchmen. Just as these pictures show the trial previously of other key fascists and collaborators, he was brought before a firing squad and in this manner he died as tyrant should and was hung up by his heels. A fitting and glorious end. All right, so um, in June 1941, Hitler broke his non-aggression pact so we know that Hitler doesn't keep his word on anything. I hope we've learned that by now. Um, and the Soviet Union was attacked by 60 million Germans and other active forces. But they were also defeated with enthusiasm by Southern Europeans and Lithuanians because they saw the German forces as great raiders. less evil than Stalin, and little did they know what Hitler had actually done to the Jews. Well, they soon realized that they were wrong as Hitler's troops created forced labor camps and began executing civilians. And it wasn't long before German troops were close to the capital of the Soviet Union and had Stalingrad surrounded. Stalin pushed Roosevelt and Churchill to attack 
from the West to divide the Germany, ger to divide Germany into a two front war. Um, this was when Churchill convinced Roosevelt to attack what he called the soft underbelly of Europe coming from Italy rather than a risky war from the West. So um, the Atlantic uh, sonar um, conveys what sonar was developed and it conveys and um, looks for long range um, sub hunting aircraft to weaken the German U-boats because at this point Germans were taking um, part in war in the waters by U-boats. They were the German submarines. So in North Africa, British and Allied troops were squeezing Italian German troops north out of Africa. They had to start down here in Africa because this is Africa. Um, these troops were led by General Eisenhower. Now Eisenhower is going to later become the president of the United States. Um, the U.S. under General Patton, which you may have, I hope you've heard of General Patton, um, he actually took Italy. Um, so on January, there we go, on January 31st in 1943, more than 90,000 surviving Germans surrendered. Um, in all, Germany lost some 330,000 troops to the fall ground, and some range as high as 1.1 million. Poland was lost a little more than that because of dust from the top. And the top American general and FDR's chief of staff, now FDR was Franklin Delano Roosevelt, he was the president of the United States. Um, George Marshall had been pushing for a Western attack at every Allied meeting. Um, the Allies began a massive military buildup in southern England. Um, Polish, Dutch, um, Belgians, the French, um, and Canadian forces readied themselves for invasion. Germany added machine gun nests, barbed wire fences, land and water mines, and underwater obstructions the beaches that were off the coast of France. Because remember, at this point in time, um, France was um, occupied by Germany. They knew that an invasion was coming, but they didn't know when, and they didn't know where. That invasion is actually going to be called D-Day. Now, this video that I'm about to show you, is, um, it is graphic. Um, you're going to see what war is truly like um, and imagine yourself being an 18 19 20 year old soldier getting off these boats as an american soldier going to fight this war on d-day it was a huge casualty loss for the united states um we, we lost a lot of soldiers that day so we're going to watch this video and then um, we're going to talk some more about it. So, but I'm just warning you, it is a little graphic. More than 70,000 American troops are about to invade German held France. Over a thousand will die on the first day, June 6th, 1944, D Day. Over 5,000 ships and 10,000 aircraft are involved in the first wave alone. Five beaches will be stormed. The most infamous is codenamed Omaha Beach. Think about Omaha Beach from uh, the standpoint of the young man. The ramp is about to drop and uh, the sights and the sounds all around provide the context of hell. The first troops on Omaha Beach meet ferocious German resistance.
rocket launchers, mortars, and 85 machine gun nests tear into the Americans. There were meant to be 32 tanks with them, but 27 sink. The men are left with virtually no cover on the beach. William Dabney is totally exposed. Tethered to his barrage balloon, he's defenseless. When it's shot down, he has his chance. Like every other soldier on Omaha Beach, black or white, Dabney's mission now is to survive. There wasn't any segregation there. Harold Baumgarten is thrown straight into the carnage. So they were men with guts hanging out of their wounds and body parts lying along their path. Some men were simply overwhelmed by the hell they met. Get down! Get down! By 9 a.m., almost 5,000 men are ashore. There are more than 2,000 U.S. casualties on Omaha Beach alone. William Dabney survives. He is later awarded the Legion of Honor. Operation Overlord is a logistical miracle, but the cost is staggering. Nearly 126,000 Americans are killed, wounded, or go missing during the Battle of Normandy. Harold Baumgarten is hit five times. After losing blood for over 30 hours, Baumgarten is brought back from the dead by a plasma transfusion, then injections of penicillin and morphine, the very supplies America has mass produced to keep its men alive. D-Day is key to Hitler's defeat. Within a month, the Allies have landed more than 877,000 troops, 112,000 vehicles, and 573,000 tons of supplies. All right, so what I hope you heard was that D-Day was the key to Hitler's defeat. D-Day is what enabled all of the troops and all of the materials and all of the supplies to get into Europe so that they were positioned to be able to begin to attack Germany. Um, the next battle we're going to talk about is the Battle of the Bulge. Now, the Battle of the Bulge was as Allied forces moved toward Germany from the west. Okay, so we've got Allied forces, the British moving in here from the west. We've got um, the Soviets advancing from the east. And so now Hitler is faced with war on two fronts. Remember, this is what Stalin had wanted. In a desperate gamble, he decided to counterattack in the West. So he's going and he's going to counterattack here. Hitler hoped a victory would split American and British forces and break up Allied supply lines because here's the British 
uh, no, here's the British, here's the American. Hitler was going to attack here. He was trying to create a split here so that the supplies could not get on through. Um, so explaining the reasoning behind his plan, Hitler said, the battle, this battle, meaning the Battle of the Bulge, is to decide whether we shall live or die. All resistance must be broken in a wave of terror. And that was Hitler, a quote from Hitler. Hitler reinforced his armies with additional draftees and some were as young as 15 years old. In one last ditch effort, Hitler's troops smashed into the first army, first US army and pushed them back. Although they were initially caught off guard, um, the allies eventually pushed the Germans back um, and the Germans had little choice but to retreat since there weren't any reinforcements available. Because remember, he had already drafted additional people as young as 15 years old. There just weren't any more people to fight. Um, the Allies restarted their drive toward Berlin. So they're trying, they're heading toward the Nazi Germany capital of Berlin. Some 600,000 American soldiers were involved. 80,000 were killed or wounded. Um, but the Americans continued to march west while American bombers were bombing Germany from the top, um, from the skies. So, Germany's, remember we talked about German, they had, at the Yalta conference, they had set up parameters for Germany's unconditional surrender. So after the Battle of the Bulge, the war in Europe really quickly drew, uh, drew to a close. In late March 1945, the Allies rolled across the Rhine River into Germany. But by the middle of April, a noose was closing in around Berlin. So they were getting squeezed, just like I said, they were trying to get, they were, the Allied forces were trying to squeeze Nazi Germany. Um, about 3 million Allied soldiers approached Berlin from the southwest. Another 6 million Soviet troops approached from the east. And Stalin's goal was to take Berlin by May 1st, which was May Day. And that was a very symbolic day in the Soviet Union. It was a matter of honor and the costs, however, were deadly because some 11 million Soviets and 3 million German soldiers died, accounting for two thirds of the soldiers killed in all of World War II. So estimates have put Soviet deaths at 18 million total. Um, Adolf Hitler was based in his bunker underneath the um, Reich Chancellery building, which was again in Berlin. Um, it was bomb proof and it had its own air recycling plant. And the complex had been built without a good communication system. So while the Soviets were um, bombing Berlin overhead, Hitler prepared for his end underground. Um, headquarters um, beneath the city that was falling around him, because Berlin was being taken over by the Allied forces. So on April 30th, Hitler gave very clear instructions to his personal adjunct, which is his kind of like his assistant. Otto Gunsch, and that both his and his wife's body should be burned. After lunch, both Hitler and Eva Hitler, and that's what she wanted to be called, um, met his inner circle in the bunker. Here, Hitler said his goodbyes. Hitler and Eva um, both committed suicide. Their bodies were carried outside and burned. So on May 7th, 1945, General Eisenhower accepted, now he's from the United States, accepted the unconditional surrender from the Third Reich, uh, of the Third Reich from the German military. Because remember, Hitler had already committed suicide by this time. So the Third Reich was, um, the German military was, who was speaking on his behalf. President Roosevelt, who had spent 12 years in office, a record, I mean, remember, presidents were limited to two terms of eight years. He had actually served four terms. Um, he did not live to witness this long-awaited victory. So 
he had been part of it from the beginning. He had done the planning, but um, he died suddenly on April 12th from a, cere a cerebral hemorrhage, which is a brain bleed, um, as the Allied armies were advancing toward Berlin. So he knew they were moving toward Berlin, but he never, he did not get to see the surrender of um, the Third Reich. So Roosevelt's successor was Harry Truman. Um, and he received news of the Nazi surrender. So on May 9th, the surrender was officially signed in Berlin. The United States and other allied powers celebrated VE Day, um, and it's called Victory in Europe Day. After nearly six years of fighting, the war in Europe had finally ended. So this shows you the map um, of how the battles took place and where they went and the Soviets role came from here. The, um, the French and the English came from here and then um, the United States came in through this way up through Italy. All right, so that wraps up our um, end of the war. Now we're gonna talk about some little details that happened during the war. Tomorrow you're going to watch a video from um, Oppenheimer versus um, Heinsberg. And um, it's very interesting and it's about the development of the atomic bomb because we have not talked about the um, Japan's role yet, but as far as the atomic bombs go, but you're going to learn about that tomorrow. So um, go ahead and move on down the form, answer the questions from today's lecture. You may need to look back through and have a great rest of your day.